All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, it's going to be a bit of a long and painful one, but we're going to get through it. Uh, I'm going to show you how to derive the equations of circular motion, uh, basically when we have constant angular acceleration. So first to get started, let's just talk about some of the similarities between linear motion and circular motion. In linear motion, actually in both, when you have displacement, if you derive it, you get velocity. If you derive it again, you get acceleration. You can go backwards by integrating from acceleration to velocity and integrate again to get displacement. In linear motion, displacement, velocity, and acceleration are right here, basically saying the exact same thing, the first and second derivatives as we go down. And with circular motion, we have theta, omega, and alpha. Again, first and second derivatives as we go down, we're deriving from displacements, velocity, and acceleration uh, in circular motion as functions of time, and in linear motion also as functions of time. So here on the left are some kinematic equations that you've seen before. I made a video deriving those. I'm going to put a link to it in the top right corner of, the vid of this video. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to derive these ones, basically the circular counterparts or angular motion counterparts. You'll notice that they have exactly the same form. Basically, if you just substitute theta, omega, and alpha with s, v, and a, these have exactly the same form. And uh, the derivation is actually exactly the same, but just because sometimes these are a little bit like um, nastier to look at, and in case you're asked to derive them, don't want you to freak out and panic. I'm just going to show you that it is the same derivation, and uh, you can actually get through it with pretty basic uh, calculus that, uh, that you should definitely be able to do at this point. So we're going to start with these expressions up here. We're going to do some calculus, and we're going to end up with these expressions right here. So to get started, let's write the expression for angular acceleration, and that is alpha t is equal to the derivative of omega, the angular velocity, with respect to time. So if we separate that and bring the dt over to the other side, we're left with d omega is equal to alpha t dt. So let's integrate both sides. So we have the integral of d omega uh, from omega naught to omega t. And we're going to do the other side with respect to t. So we have from t naught to t, we have uh, alpha t dt. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space here. And we can evaluate the left-hand side. So the sum of all of the infinitesimally small dw's is just w. And we're evaluating from, sorry, not w, omega, omega naught to omega t. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, we're just going to leave it exactly the same. So on the left side, we get omega t minus omega naught. And the right-hand is the same. And we can bring the omega naught over to the right-hand side, so we're left with just omega t is equal to that whole right side plus omega naught. Okay, we're going to stop there, but we're going to be coming back and grabbing that expression later. Um, let's go through the exact same process, but we're going to use the expression for angular velocity as a function of time. So we had um, omega t, right? And we're getting that from right here. So omega t is equal to d theta dt. So we basically want to do the exact same thing. We're going to bring the dt up to the other side, and we'll be having uh, d theta is equal to omega t dt. Then we're going to integrate both sides. So on the left, we're going to integrate from theta 0 to theta t d theta. And on the right side, with respect to time, so from t naught to t, we have omega t dt. So we can evaluate the left. That just becomes theta from theta naught to theta t. And we're going to leave the right-hand side the same. And similar to before, the left-hand side is just theta t minus theta naught. We can bring the negative theta naught to the right-hand side and make it positive to basically give us theta t is equal to the right side plus theta naught. All right, let's give ourselves again some more space. And it looks like I somehow cut off, um, it was right here, wt is equal to that plus w naught. So we're going to use this expression right here. We're going to work with it a little bit more to basically convert it into this equation that you'll be finding in formula sheets, etc. So again, more space. 
And maybe let's just switch colors here so it's obvious that we're working on something new. So we have omega t is equal to omega naught plus that integral. But I'm going to change some of the subscripts here because often uh, for t naught, we're basically just starting at time equals zero. So let's actually erase that and let's write in a zero there. Maybe we'll keep it the same color, zero. And I'm also going to get rid of the T subscript here on the W, uh, the omega, sorry. And I'm going to replace that with F. Because you often see, when we go back up here, um, you often see these written with uh, the F subscript, not the T subscript. So I'll just change that down here. It's no big deal. Um, but just so in case you're wondering why that's changing. And if you remember before, for these problems, I mentioned that we're going to be using a constant acceleration for an angular acceleration. So alpha here is a constant value. So it can actually come outside of the integral. Uh, so we're going to have omega f is equal to omega naught plus alpha. And then you have the integral of 0 to t dt. Um, you can write that t in there if you want. I just like to get rid of it sometimes it's a little bit cleaner to look at but now when we evaluate this integral again we have all the same stuff on the left omega f is equal to omega naught plus alpha and this just becomes t from 0 to t and that really simply reduces to omega f is equal to omega naught plus alpha t which was our first equation that we were looking at up above right there um, all right so let's start working on one of the other ones we're going to grab this expression here and uh, perform some more work on it and again let's kind of change around some of these subscripts let's change t naught just to a zero because it's usually starting at a zero and this t here uh, just to match what we normally see as a uh, theta f so when we look at this expression, we have uh, omega t. Uh, we actually have the expression for omega in terms of t right here. Omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t. So we can just substitute that in right here into our integral. So we have from 0 to t. We'll just put it all in brackets. We have omega naught plus alpha t all dt. So to reduce any ambiguity, let's split those into two integrals. But because both of these integrals are with respect to time, it sees omega and alpha both as constants, so we can pull them to the outsides. Then we can pretty quickly simplify these and make those last substitutions of the t's and zeros to get our final expression. Actually, we can also, I should have, I should have canceled this out at the beginning, but because we're, like I said here, um, where we're considering time usually to start from zero. We also, in these rotational problems, we usually consider the original angle as zero and like start rotating out from that. So theta naught typically is zero as well. So we can actually just get rid of that. And we're gonna have this expression here. Theta f is equal to omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared. And that is another one of our kinematic equations, uh, basically the circular versions of it, which if we go back up here, it is the third one in that list, just on the right of that red bar. All right, so let's, uh, let's try and figure out how to get the last one, which is uh, omega f squared equals omega i squared plus 2 alpha theta. This one is it's kind of the trickiest one to get, but uh, shouldn't be a problem for us. It's just going to require a little bit of trickery uh, using something called the chain rule or just multiplying by unity, however you want to really talk about that. But we have um, alpha is equal to the change, the rate of change in omega over time, right? Angular acceleration is equal to the rate of change of the angular speed or velocity. What we can do is we can multiply this right-hand side by unity. So we have d omega dt. If we multiply it by a fraction that's the same on the top and the bottom, nothing actually changes. So we're going to multiply it by d theta over d theta. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to swap around some of these, the positions of them. So we'll have d omega over d theta times d theta over dt. 
what we did is switch these uh, dt and d thetas here, and because they're all this is all multiplication, this is totally acceptable to do. But d theta dt, uh, this is equal to omega. So we're just left with d omega over d theta times omega, and that was all equal again to our original alpha. So what we can do now is we can just multiply both sides by d theta. Basically, it's just going to bring d theta up to that side right there, but we can write it out. So we'll have um, omega d omega is equal to alpha d theta. Now, all we need to do is just integrate both sides. So we'll have the integral from omega naught to omega of omega d omega. And because we know alpha is a constant, we can bring it outside of the integral sign right away um, when, when we're evaluating here for d theta. And we'll go from theta naught to theta. All right, so simplifying this a little bit, on the left-hand side, we're going to have 1 half omega squared from omega naught to omega. And on the right side, we're just going to have alpha theta from theta naught to theta. So if we go ahead and continue to simplify the left-hand side, we're going to have 1 half times omega squared minus omega naught squared. And on the right side, we're just going to have alpha times theta minus theta naught. Now again, because uh, for the same reason as before, uh, where theta naught is usually considered zero, we're just going to set that to zero because we're considering the starting position as no rotation. So we can we'll just come up here, give ourselves a little bit more space, and we'll multiply both sides by two. So we have omega squared minus omega naught squared is equal to two alpha theta. And if we just bring over the omega naught squared to the other side or add it to both sides, we're left with omega squared is equal to omega naught squared plus 2 alpha theta. And that is the last sort of circular motion kinematic equation that you're typically given. And that is how to derive it. So there you go. In recap, we derived uh, 1, 2, 3, which all were these original ones right here on the right hand side of that red bar. Uh, so yeah, now you know how to derive them.